Today we're going to be doing a control survey using the Inland Reach RS3. And using Inland Flow, I'm going to show you exactly the steps you need to take in order to localize your state plane coordinates over to a local coordinate system. Now the purpose for today's survey is that we are going to be retracing a control survey that was done back in 2021. This control survey was used for a manned aircraft aerial mapping mission and the client wants to do the same thing now except they are using a local coordinate system and the flight limits are a lot smaller for the drone survey in comparison to the manned aircraft mission that was done back in 2021 and so we need to establish new control points inside of our clients property but maintain the local coordinate system that was used in the initial control survey now before I came onto the field I used Inland Flow 360 on my desktop to create a job and set the state plane coordinates for which I would be collecting data today with my GNSS receiver so since we're in Toledo Ohio I used NAD 83 Ohio North US survey feet and for the vertical coordinate system I used NAVD 88 with the geoid 18 orthometric height now with the project set up and having our state plane coordinates set up I had my client send me the localized control points to which I imported into my job having the points in the project will allow us to match between the points that we will measure here in the field and the record local coordinates that were given to us by our client and the localization tool inside of Imlid Flow is what is going to allow us to localize our data set in order to match the local coordinate system that our client desires. And so what we're going to do now is take a look at this control survey and we're going to start down in the southeast corner of the project where control point 45000 lives. We're going to do our best to go around the outside of the project first and then we'll go after the inside control and the more points that we collect the better chance we have at localizing the control points with a minimal amount of error. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, and so if we take a look here, this is the first control point, point 45000. This white X right here is what they mean by Shiner. And this is the kind of target that they use when they're doing manned aircraft missions in order to geo-reference their data. I can see that there's a small mag nail here, so I'm gonna stick the tip of my rod here. So for our entrop corrections, I'm going to be using GeoNet, which is a decentralized RTK correction network. And so I've got my entry credentials put in here. We have a fixed reading and we'll go ahead and observe this first point and measure. Okay, perfect. Now let's head over to the next control point. All right, and right here we can see this is point 45001 and I've got a little black disc here. So I'll be setting my rod on that and we'll go ahead and measure this point. Again, by measuring the points in state plane coordinates, we can then match them to the local coordinates that we got from the original survey. And that is how we're gonna do our localization inside of Inlet Flow. All right, so this point is done. So now let's head over to the next control point. Okay, and I see the next one. We've got a similar black disc. I'll actually hold this right there. So we'll go ahead and hit measure. Okay, perfect. We've now got three control points. Let's head down the road and grab another one. Okay, here we go. This is 45005 and we are going to measure. Now I've got four control points here and I technically could do the localization using these four points. However, I'm gonna try to find more points from the control survey so that I have several points that I can use so that we can get the best fit for our local coordinate system. And if you look behind me here, here is point number 50004. So let's go ahead and measure it. Okay, and measure. Cool. All right, and so right there, this is point number 60001, right in the middle, and measure. There we go. So unfortunately, I couldn't find point number 45006. I went up and down the road, and I just could not find this point. But behind me here is 45009, so we will measure this one. 45009, measure. There it is on the map. Cool. There we go. All right, so we're now on site and you can see here, this is point number one. It's guarded by what I like to call a lath fence. If we get nice and close to it, you can see that it actually says GPS, which is the GPS control point that they set here on site. So go ahead now and measure this point, point number one. And we'll go ahead and hit measure. Cool, all right, let's keep heading north and try to find more control points. Okay, next one here, 45008. Looks to be this giant vinyl target. 
Uh, let me see if there's a point in the middle. Yep, there it is. 45008. And measure where that is in relation to the other points. Yeah, I like where that's at. It's really good. All right, perfect. And that right there is point number 1001. So this will be point 1001 and measure. Nice, very good. We've been looking around here for a while and I'm having a hard time finding. <laughs> I just found it. Ah, uh, how am I gonna get to that? This is a giant fence here. Seriously, is it even worth it? Like, I have a bunch of control points. Like, I don't know if I actually need it. Ah, uh, there's no gate? No, no gate. Just an eight foot fence between me and our control point. Honestly, I'm gonna skip it because I don't know how to get over this fence. And even if I did figure out how to get over this fence, I don't think it's worth our time. All right, let's go find more points. Back behind me here, that was 45004. And right in front of me is his brother, 45003, which is also behind this fence. Man, two points, that sucks. Oh well, what are you gonna do? So while we may have been defeated by the last two points, I can confirm that point number three is alive and well. It's even got its witness post, which is great to see. Okay, and this is point number three, and we can measure. Okay, and we're done. That'll be the last point that we measure for our control survey. I know there's a few more points on the east side of the site, but the client told me that these points are gone, so I'm not even gonna look for them. Plus, we've got plenty of points to work with here. So now I'm gonna show you the localization process using Inlet Flow. Before we get back out into the field, I want to let you guys know that I'm going to be in London attending the Geo Business Conference. Happening on June 4th and 5th, Geo Business is the UK's largest geospatial event, hosting speakers from a diverse group of industries in the geospatial world. Industries like AEC, Earth observations, surveying and mapping, transportation and infrastructure, as well as utility and energy. Plus, they're going to have an exhibit hall with over 100 exhibitors from all of your favorite companies. I'm going to be there and I'm also going to be speaking about the survey school and all of the progress that our students have made in the past year. If you're interested in attending GeoBusiness, be sure to use my link down below to get a free conference pass. I'm going to be there both days documenting the conference on my YouTube channel. And if you want to be featured in my YouTube videos, then send me an email or message me on LinkedIn to connect. I look forward to seeing all of you on June 4th and 5th in London for GeoBusiness 2025. All right, let's head back out into the field. All right, so what we're gonna start by doing is clicking on the little pencil and ruler icon. These are the tools that you can use inside of Imlet Flow. So I'm gonna click here, and down at the bottom left where it says adjust positioning, you will see your localization tool. So you'll go ahead and click on that. I'm gonna click on add pair, and then it asks us what the control point is and then what the measured point is. So the control point is going to be the record coordinates from the local coordinate system, and the measured points are the state plane coordinates that we just measured with our GNSS receiver. So we'll select control point, and I'm gonna come down here and start with 4500, and then the measured point, I'm not sure which one of these is 4500 so I can just search up 45000 okay and it's this one right here okay and I want to utilize horizontal and vertical so I'll hit save cool so that's our first matched pair and obviously our residuals are zero because we need to add more control points so we'll add the next pair control point 40001 okay that's this one Save, we'll have the next pair. And you don't wanna look at the results immediately because once you start to look at the results when there aren't that many points, you start to get a little concerned um, and there might be outliers in your data set that you don't know about. That's why you wanna measure a lot of points. So as you can see, I already have half of a foot of error in the horizontal, which is showing us that we have some issues with the local control, but that's okay. Because again, we're gonna add a lot more points. So let's keep going. So four, five, zero, zero, five. There we go, which matches up with 104. Save, 5008. There we go, save, 009. Save, 50004. There we go, save, 60001. There we go, save, point number one. And save. 
Okay, here we go. So we can see here, we have all of the residual errors that come with pairing up each of the state plane coordinates to the local coordinates. And I was hired to do the control survey because we know that there is an issue with some of these control points, but we don't know which ones, but using the localization tool, I was able to figure out which one it is. And I think the culprit is 45002. Now what I can do is I can disable just the horizontal to see how my residuals look. So it looks like we're within a tenth, maybe two tenths in some areas. And if I want to cancel out the vertical as well, I can do that as well. So I'm actually going to remove all of 45002. And seeing here now, I have slight discrepancies between these points, but within a tenth or two is acceptable versus being off several feet. Now I can always try to tighten this up a little bit more. Let's say I want to turn this one off and see how my residuals look now. So, okay, we're looking pretty good. Maybe I turn this one off as well. So now it looks like we're hovering around a tenth, which I like. And looking here on the vertical, I can see this one's half a foot. So maybe I turn this one off as well. It looks like 50004 also has some error in it, so I'll turn that one off. And yeah, those will be the three points that I turn off. Of course, you can turn off just the horizontal or just the vertical for each of these points. It's up to you, whatever you want to do and whatever you're comfortable with. It looks like I'm within one tenth of a foot in the horizontal and about two tenths of a foot in the vertical. So these are the accuracies that I will report to my client when I do the transformation. So if I click on preview results, we are given the transformation that will happen to the job once we go ahead and translate all of the points over. So I'm going to go ahead and click apply to project. So all 28 of my points were now reprojected and I can save this coordinate system. So I'll click save new coordinate system and then I can just call this whatever I want. So anytime I return back to this site, I can reference this coordinate system and I don't have to do the control survey all over again. Save. And there we go. Now we can start setting control for the drone survey and give our client all of the data in their local coordinates. Now I have to mention that the localization option as well as the aerial map that you see in Inlet Flow are behind the paywall of the premium survey subscription. So you will have to pay to get these features. However, if you join the survey school, students will have access to the premium survey features absolutely for free. If you guys are interested in learning more about Inlet's products, be sure to visit the link in the description. Also, if you're looking to level up your survey game, then visit theSurveySchool.com. Thanks guys for watching and I'll see you all next time.